Notice that when we do the, the right thing, as Daniel did, there may be people who are out to get us. In this case, they, they didn't want Daniel to succeed. They didn't want Daniel to, to be promoted in, in the king's court. It, it may have been an issue that, that Daniel had held the other administrators uh, accountable. He had, he had held the satraps to, accountable. Maybe they were trying to, to take more than, than their share from the king. Maybe they were trying to, to keep more than their share of the, the taxes. And, and as Daniel called them to account, as he wouldn't be a part of their scheme, as he wouldn't be a part of their, their dishonesty, then it was, was an issue that, uh, that they wanted to do away with Daniel. They wanted to get rid of him so they could, could do their own thing. L listen to what they did in verse 6. It said, so the administrators and satraps went as a group to the king and said, O King Darius, live forever. The royal administrators, prefects, satraps, advisors, and governors have all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or man during the next 30 days, except you, O king, shall be thrown into the lion's den. Now, O king, issue the decree and put it in writing so that it cannot be altered in accordance with the laws of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be repealed. So King Darius put the decree in writing. You know, Darius thought it was a pretty good idea to, to require people to honor him. He didn't see any harm in, in being lifted up, but yet in his, in his own arrogance, he didn't realize the impact it would have on someone like Daniel. Daniel who was trusted in his court, but Daniel who was also faithful to the God he, he served. But Daniel was very devoted in, in following God and and it was his practice to, to turn toward Jerusalem three times a day and pray. Now Daniel may have done his prayers very publicly up until this point, but, but after the decree was made, in verse 10 it says, Daniel went home to his upstairs room where the window opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God just as he had done before. You know, Daniel chose discipline rather than compromise. Now, Daniel may have done his prayers publicly in the past, and now he's doing them privately, but he wasn't going to give up his praying for, for the sake of following the king's decree. Daniel was not going to give up discipline and devotion to God in order to compromise for what the, the king asked them to, to do. Well, as the story goes on, the the other administrators and, and satraps, they, they tried to trap Daniel. They, they knew that Daniel would, would surely pray in this 30-day period of time, so they, they started spying on him, and then they reported back to the king and told the king that, that he had to throw Daniel in the lion's den because he had broken the king's decree. Well, with much hesitation and anguish, the, the king had Daniel thrown to the lions. But before he did, he said to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve, continually rescue you. you know, even though King Darius did not profess to believing in, in Daniel's God, he knew how Daniel's God's hand was on Daniel's life. And he said that, you know, may your God rescue you, even from the mouth of the lions. Well, the story says that Daniel was put in the lion's den, a stone was rolled in front of the lion's den so that he could not escape. It also was, was stamped with the, the signet of, of the king. And then it says that the king returned to his palace and he had a very restless and, and sleepless night. First thing in the morning, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. The king expected to find Daniel dead, but there, there was a part of him that, that hoped that Daniel's God had maybe delivered him. Verse 20 says, when he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice. Daniel, servant of the living God, has, has your God whom you serve continually been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lion. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done anything wrong before you, O king. The king was overjoyed and, and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And then Daniel was lifted from the den. No wound was found on him because he had trusted in his God. 
Now, the story goes on and has a rather gruesome twist. You know, it says, after Daniel was rescued, and, and then the king ordered that the men who had accused Daniel, the, the men who had set Daniel up, he declared that they were to be thrown in, into the lion's den. Well, maybe that seems like justice for, for those men to be thrown in. But it also says that they were to throw in their wives and their children. And the story says that even before they, they hit the, the ground, the, the floor of the cave, it, it says that uh, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. Now, it may seem just that, that the men who conspired against Daniel were thrown to the lions, but it seems rather unfair that the, the wives and the, the children were thrown in. But let me make an application at this point, not that I'm um, saying that we should throw people to the lions, but when a father sins, his sin doesn't just affect him. When a father sins, it affects his wife and, and his whole family. This also applies to, to mothers. Whenever a, a man or a woman is unfaithful in, in a relationship, that unfaithfulness hurts their partner. That unfaithfulness also ha affects the kids as the relationship breaks up or, or ends in divorce. A business executive or, or even a bookkeeper who's, who's dishonest, that takes money from the business that is not rightfully theirs. The, the money that they've received is from ill-gotten gain and, and it may allow their, their family to live at a higher standard of living for a while, a, a standard of living that is really beyond their means. But, but when they're found out, their standard of living changes. It becomes even more difficult for the family as they have to, to pay back the, the money that they, they embezzled, as, as they have to deal with, with the courts, as they have to, to spend time in, in, in jail. The, the consequences do not just affect them, but it also affects their whole family. When husbands or wives, mothers or fathers sin, and they live their, their life somewhere short of integrity, they're not sinning in a vacuum. Their sin affects others in their household. Their sin affects others in their household. Let's take it a step further. You say, oh, I'm single. So you know, it really doesn't matter what I do because it doesn't affect anyone else. Well, I've talked to many parents who have gone through agonizing times because of choices that, that their children have made. You know, seeing their child in juvenile detention or, or in jail, walking with their child through a, a time of, a, of addiction to, to drugs or, or alcohol. None of us sin in a vacuum. You know, our sin impacts the, the lives of others. Our sin brings heartache into the lives of others, brings heartache into the lives that, of those who are closest to us, those that we, we love the most.